All right, we're going to tie the uh, mixed media. Mixed media is an artistic term that refers to a work of art that involves various media in the same piece of art. And uh, this fly, I believe, was named by an Ohio fly fisher. Uh, at least that's where I first saw the pattern. I don't want to claim that as gospel, but that's where I first saw it. It uses some very interesting materials. It looks very lively in the water and suggests a crayfish. Good little pattern for smallmouth bass and carp in Midwestern rivers. Let's tie it. To start with a uh, size 4 hook. This is a 3x long uh, streamer hook and size 4. I think this one is a Tiemco 5263. But you come back here about uh, oh a quarter inch or so and throw a little bump of thread onto this. I'm using 6 aught unithread in uh, fluorescent orange. Put a little bump right about there. I'm going to put on uh, some metallic eyes. Uh, these are uh, Spirit River Dazzle Eyes in the 5 seconds inch size. You could also use just lead dumbbells or something like that. I like these. I like the uh, the the bright sheen that you get from the gold. I do figure eight wraps and then some little, little uh, horizontal wraps around the, the bottom to kind of cinch everything down, get some tension there. Okay, now I come back in front and we're going to tie on some uh, silly legs or silicone rubber legs, size medium. This is what these uh, look like. They're a pumpkin and green and orange with some uh, glittery uh, effects in them, but they're a barred leg. We're going to use six of them, and they come in a sheet like this here. I clip the six off, leaving the ends attached. And you'll see why I'm going to do that. It just gives me better control as I tie these onto the hook. I fold them over around the uh, thread at the midway point, like so. <laughs> let's try let's try that again okay much better and once I get down here I kind of pull on them a bit and wrap in front of them to get them uh, tied down there they're in there come in behind the uh, eye now don't stretch this tight here now just let it lay over over those eyes and then get some good thread wraps on it behind it. Don't go too tight or you may cut them. Now we can pull on it and start laying down a body. I pull them tight and I wrap over until I'm uh, just above the the uh, hook barb. At this point I can let go and now lay down a thread body. There, that's good. Now pull these back here and I cut these off to where they'll be just a little longer than the hook shank. That's that. Come back here, come in front of those eyes again, and turn the fly over where it's upside down. And this is actually right side up. This is the way the, the fly will ride in the water. Makes it a little more uh, snag resistant to have those eyes on there. I'm going to grab uh, about uh, six or seven uh, strands of uh, Crystal Flash. This is Root Beer Crystal Flash. And by the way, buy the Crystal Flash, the brand that's called Crystal Flash with a K. Don't buy Mono, threat, mono Flash. I mean, this is my opinion. Don't buy the Mono Flash or some of the substitutes because they're too crinkly. They're not nice and straight. They don't tie as well as the original Crystal Flash. Tie those in just like that. The last material we use on this is a foxtail. I like wild red foxtail because it's, uh, they have longer, thicker, fuller fibers than uh, what you would get from a farm-raised fox. And uh, I buy mine from uh, Bob Clouser's fly shop out in Pennsylvania. I order them. But a foxtail has two colors on it. You can see there's a creamy color on one side and, and more of a dark, rusty on the other. It's your preference. I tie uh, a few of both uh, so that I've got different colors to see what the fish like. But I'm going to come in here and I am going to uh, get a good 
good thick bunch of this. I don't want it to be ridiculously thick, but a fairly thick bunch because we're going to comb out the under fur. Now clip it down right next to this to the skin to get all of the length of the hair. Now the next thing you do is you're going to hold these very tightly and you're going to you're going to stroke through them with a uh, pet a pet brush, a pet grooming brush to get those uh uh, under that under fur out of there. I'll do that. It's kind of got to really hold tight to the tips while you're doing that. I'll show you what this looks like. I give it three or four passes through there, and you get all that under fur out of there. Save that under fur because it makes really nice dubbing for uh, nymphs and dry flies. But now what we have is some nice straight fox fibers. I'm going to measure that to be. Uh, Oh, just lay back where it goes with the tips of the feather of the of the fibers go just beyond the bend of the hook. And at that point, I'll cut this off, and I can lay this in here at an angle, get some thread wraps around it, a nice loose gathering wrap, and then cinch it down. Wrap a nice neat head. Extremely simple fly. Very effective. Has wonderful action in the water. Let's get a good, strong whip finish. We're almost done. Take this out. Clip that crystal flash so that it is just longer than the hair. Tease it up a little bit so that it lays in there with the hair and you have the mixed media. Now what I like to do with this fly is coat the uh, thread wraps here and here and also coat the eyes and the, that uh, this rubber leg material right here with a good uh, 30 minute epoxy and then uh, turn it on a dryer to let it dry. You can also use a loon hardhead cement for that purpose, but it will make the fly a lot more durable.